Good afternoon and welcome to Reese's Mining Resources Jobs and Opportunities in South Australia webinar. It's a pleasure to meet you today uh, and I will just run through a standard disclaimer before we start. The intent of this uh, webinar is to provide general information. It is obviously not personal or specific to any particular business and uh, the data should be uh, treated as such. I'll move along to the webinar overview. We'll firstly introduce RISA and then talking about the higher intentions report with today's updated data, which includes the South Australian advertis advertisements, trends and the big picture some regional analysis of where the jobs and opportunities are at an occupational level with some subsector breakdown and then industry activity. My name is Phil DeCourcy and I'm the CEO of RESA and with me today is Jody Badcock who is the Workforce Development Manager. RESA as an organisation is dedicated to develop the resources sector in South Australia for jobs and opportunities and to look at the economic outcomes that are associated with how we translate those jobs and opportunities into real opportunities for South Australians. We are an enabler and a developer and we facilitate jobs and opportunities through programs and projects which we develop and offer to employers in the industry and to organisations such as uh, councils and other agencies who are interested in economic development. We look at the labour market to understand where the priority skills are and what the opportunities might be for them and also where there are gaps and shortages both in supply and on the demand side. We develop and deliver programs around workforce development, professional development, uh, skills and training strategies and work with companies to understand their needs, as well as work with supply chain companies to understand their capability and improve their competitiveness within the resources sector. Essentially, RESA is a solutions broker. So, uh, the hiring intentions report is a a leading indicator of uh, occupations and jobs within the resources sector in South Australia. We've been collecting data for about five years now and we've picked up the number of jobs that are advertised each uh, month on uh, various websites to indicate uh, the total number that are, uh, that are being employed. And as we pick up those data, we put out a monthly report, but then we do this quarterly update on the webinar. So, uh, in terms of the data, um, I'd like to pass to Jodie to talk about that. Thank you, Phil. Uh, with the hiring intentions report, we take the data from advertised vacancies and we further classify them by subsector. Uh, there are 19 subsectors that we look at which correlate with the Australian New Zealand uh, Classification of Occupations Index, the ANSCO coding, um, and they include things like oil and gas, drilling and blasting, engineering, quality, safety and health, and so on. We then also look at the level of the, the advertised vacancy. Is it an entry level opportunity? Uh, is it a trade position? Is it a technician, supervisor, manager, engineer, oh, sorry, or professional vacancy? We classify the vacancies by region. Um, so we look at where the, the job is actually listed, but also drill down to see if in the description uh, the vacancy is actually going to take place or the job is going to take place in a region other than where it's advertised. And we take the classification by where the work is based. Uh, and we also look at job opportunities that are for South Australians. So if it's uh, an expat recruitment program where the job is based overseas, we don't count that in our, in our summary. Uh, but if it's a fly-in fire opportunity for a South Australian based person, then we would take that into, into the overall tally. Uh, we look at what the actual job is. We have a, a list of 635 occupation titles, uh, so we classify the jobs against those job titles, um, and we track the daily listings for vacancies. Uh, if there are multiple positions advertised in one advertisement, uh, we were, and the job titles are listed, we will count them as separate jobs. Uh, but if it's a, an advertisement for multiple positions that aren't specified, so for example drillers, plant operators, uh, then we will count that as a single vacancy. 
Uh, and we do look at the number of advertisements, not the number of positions. So this slide is telling us, uh, since RESA has been tracking the vacancies advertised for South Australia in the resources sector, um, so going back to 2013, uh, the number of vacancies up until the current quarter, and what we can see is very clearly that we're making a recovery from the 2015 downturn. Uh, there were 672 positions advertised in quarter one, compared to 193 uh, advertisements placed at the same time last year. Um, this is higher than in 2012-13 before the downturn impact of the sector. So it's, it's becoming clear that the growth is not only continuing but actually increasing over time. That's a, an interesting um, uh, slide, Jody, from the point of view that I think it, it does actually define what was the bottom of the job market in the resources sector and it seems to me now the trend is indicating that we're moving out of that. This is uh, a leading indicator, isn't it, of jobs? That's right. Because it's based on real-time advertisements, it's, it's what's actually happening in the sector on a day-by-day, -day, monthly basis. So this graph is indicating index vacancies. Uh, we index the, the current month's vacancies against the three-year average from uh, including 2013, 14 and 15 and that takes into account peak times and the, the bottom of the downturn. So we average that out and then compare the current vacancies against that. Uh, and what we can see from the index vacancies is that the number of advertisements has been consistently higher and by September 2017 there's been an increase of 196% against the same time, uh, the, the three year average from that time period that we've indicated. So Phil has some insights into the market uh, factors that are influencing this growth. Well, I, I'd just like to move towards this um, South Australian comparison of mining jobs between, compared to the national. This slide shows the Reserve Bank of Australia bulk commodity price index compared to the RESA index of jobs which are based upon uh, December 2015 as 100. Again, it clearly defines what was the bottom of the, the quarter, sorry, the bottom of the swing in terms of jobs advertisements. But it, it shows a correlation between the price of commodities as well as the number of jobs that are being advertised. And I think the correlation is, is quite noticeable there and most people will see that the bottom of the cycle as well as the lift uh, coincide. There is an interesting aspect of this because this bulk commodity um, price does talk about Australian um, prices and we talk about Australian jobs. Recently the ABS uh, released their quarterly data for August, which showed that in South Australia there were 9,200 employment um, people employed within the mining and resources sector in South Australia. And that's down slightly from the 9,300 in the last quarter. However, as mentioned, the index that we're talking about is a leading indicator of jobs and when the data will come in in the next quarter, we would expect that to see that that would pick up. We will talk more later about the reasons that South Australia is a little bit different to the national market, but South Australia has a fewer number of projects obviously than, than the whole nation and our projects are more coming on to um, commodities which heavy metal price, heavy metals, and they are more responsive to the new projects that are coming online. So as new projects come online and we start to get employment happening in those, coming off a relatively small base of employment in South Australia, it has a bigger impact on the total number of um, the percentage of jobs. Thank you, Phil. Uh, the slide that we're looking at now, it gives us an indication of where the jobs are located, so in which regions of South Australia the jobs are. Um, and we're looking at quarter three and quarter four of the last financial year and the first quarter of this year. Um, Overall, uh, it looks fairly stable in terms of the proportion of where the jobs are taking place. I guess a couple of things to notice in, in quarter one, 
the vacancies were predominantly in Adelaide and in Cooper Pedy in the outback regions, which is what we would expect and that's been consistent um, across each of the periods that are shown in the, in the slide that we're looking at. Um, there has been a slight shift in the last quarter from vacancies sorry, two vacancies in Coobapedia and the Outback with 54 different companies advertising for jobs in that region um, and overall 48% of vacancies in remote and regional areas. We've maintained about 8% in Wyala and the Eyre Peninsula with 28 different companies advertising jobs in that region. So although it's a, a smaller, a much smaller proportion of jobs, there's still a wide variety of companies that are actually operating in the sector in the Wyala region. Um, we've got 52% of the jobs uh, that are located in Adelaide and we know from our own breakdown that about 35% of those jobs are actually more likely to be occupations that are undertaken in regional areas, so things like diesel fitters, drilling, um, blasting and so on where the vacancy is listed as an Adelaide position but it's actually that work would be taking place uh, where the mines are located. So the next slide gives us a breakdown of the types of jobs um, and who's employing in a couple of the regions, so Coobapedi in the Outback region and the following slide will be for Wyala region. Um, so what we can see is that four of the resources companies have advertised in this quarter um, and these are with a number of vacancies, so Challenger Goldmine, BHP Billiton, Aluka and Oz Minerals. Um, there are currently nine operating mines in the regions and in this quarter we've had 45 different advertisers. Sorry, that's not the number that we need to be looking at. We've got the four mining companies that are advertising. Um, we've got 17 METS companies advertising, which is an increase from the previous quarter and it's still an indicative of a flow through of opportunities um, in the sector to supply and service companies. Um, there have been 29 contractors such as Complete Personnel, Recruitment Vision, Exact Mining Services, Red Path Mining and Core Staff um, who have advertised significant numbers of vacancies in this period um, and I guess it just shows the diversity of the, the types of companies operating and where the workforce is being drawn from and who's managing that workforce. Um, by comparison, uh, there have been 27% of the jobs in this region for operators, um, so equipment operators, 26% of the vacancies for maintenance and mechanical occupations, um, and 13% for engineering and engineering management, which has seen a 3% increase from the previous quarter. Um, it's worth noting that electrotechnologies are at 12%, uh, which is up from in both of the previous two quarters. Um, yeah, so I think it's just interesting to note the slight shifts in where the vacancies are and what they are in each region. Um, the next slide will give us a bit of an insight into what's happening around Wyala and the Air Peninsula. So we've had uh, four resource and processing companies advertising in that period, um, six METS companies, nine labour hire and contracting companies. Um, so again, it's, it's interesting to note where the people are actually being employed and where the jobs are. Um, and for job seekers looking to engage in the sector, it's really important for us to be able to pass that information on to them and make sure that, that they're being directed to where the jobs are. And that also applies where there's um, you know, changes in mine life cycle and people moving from different op one operation to another, um, understanding the range of potential employers there might be for people with those skills. It's, a, it's interesting, um, Jody, to talk about the METS companies that have been identified in these uh, areas and to speak to the, uh, that, that point. Uh, mining equipment technology and services companies, which represented uh, represented in the METS companies, are essentially equal in size in terms of employment numbers to those that are directly employed in mining and oil and gas companies in South Australia. There was uh, some work undertaken uh, at a national level, but including South Australia, uh, doing a survey of that data, and it showed that South Australia's employment in that sector is between 10 and 15,000 when it's considered directly related to supporting the mining and oil and gas sector. So you can see that that's actually almost doubling the size of the opportunities for people for jobs in South Australia in, in the sector. 
Thank you, Phil. Uh, the graph that we're looking at at the moment is a breakdown of the occupational level for the jobs that have been advertised. Um, so we have seven categories that we look at from entry level through to professional occupations. Um, what we can see over the period of this quarter has been an increase in trades vacancies and there's been a, a shift from decreasing operator and professional opportunities in last quarter to increase each month. Um, so where, where the jobs were looking to drop off, they've actually popped back up again. Um, within these, these breakdowns, so 46 percent of the, the positions were for trades and operators, 29% um, for professionals and 12% in supervisory and management positions which was an increase from the previous quarter. Hmm. And I think this is a really interesting slide uh, in terms of each of the, the categories are, are mostly increasing but the stark outlier here is the trades occupations. It seems that trades are in high demand. When we've um, been discussing this issue around uh, the region, uh, in particular in South Australia, uh, there has been um, notification to us that there are certain trades that are in very short supply and it will be uh, important for us to consider what the flow through of qualifications, apprentices and trade qualifications will be in the coming uh, months. Um, refrigeration mechanics, diesel fitters, uh, electricians, drillers are all indicated as being in short supply if not unobtainable in South Australia at the moment. And as a small percentage of the national market, the opportunity for those people, when the downturn was on, to move into other sectors and into other regions, including Queensland, Western Australia, will mean that drawing them back will be particularly difficult as the, as the mood and the number of jobs and opportunities in South Australia starts to pick up again, or has picked up again. Yes, and I think the next slide will help to fill that picture in even a little more. So what we have here is a, a subsector breakdown from quarter one 2016 through to quarter one 2017-18. Uh, we've just selected four subsectors to, to give a bit of a picture of what's actually happening with the vacancies. Uh, and then I've got a bit of a drill down on some of these a little bit further that I can provide some information about. So this slide looks at four key industry subtectors and we can see overall growth across a range of job types. Um, engineering advertisements have continued to increase and they actually doubled during the last quarter. Equipment operators have shown a significant increase, keeping in mind single ads often represent multiple job opportunities and they've tripled since this time last year. Uh, and one of the, the points following on from what Phil was saying is the, the increase in the number of vacancies may actually be a result of the difficulty in finding people in that companies are having to advertise more than once for the same job, um, although we do screen that out where it's obvious, um, but that still may be occurring. And also that the, the higher tier companies are actually having to go through more than one supplier to meet the demand that they have for certain skills which means we may have two different companies advertising for the same um, the same company uh, for the contracts that they have. Um, when we look at the geoscience and surveying we, we always give a little bit of special attention to this because it, it tends to be an indication of where a, uh, activity is going to occur for other flow on jobs. Um, so it did drop slightly in July, but was back up in August and September. So we've seen an overall relatively stable figure, but that drop is really, that we're seeing in that burgundy line, it really relates to that drop off in July. Um, um, but then it was relatively stable after that. Um, Okay, so we have a little bit of a breakdown for some of the occupations. We looked at drilling and blasting just because we do group different job titles. So drilling and blasting, shot fire has made up 20% of those vacancies and dr exploration drill has made up 63%. Um, so exploration drilling vacancies and that could be drillers assistants as well as drillers. Um, but it also leads to that point that we're seeing a lot of vacancies advertised in this area um, and it, it could be that people have moved on, they've moved out of the sector and they're getting very hard to find. 
Uh, under the mechanical, metal and maintenance occupations, they made up 27% of the overall vacancies for the quarter. Um, in the trades area, 20% were in fabrication. Um, light vehicle or auto electrical vacancies made up 5% and diesel, um, diesel fitter, heavy diesel fitter positions made up 35%. Um, so in that trade again, we're seeing quite a big demand for occupations. Um, and notably in engineering, there were 10% of the engineering occupations listed were for mining engineers and 17% were for project engineers. Uh, the, the mining engineers vacancies is interesting because we no longer have a, a training provider with capacity to provide mining engineers. Um, it's actually not being offered to students in South Australia in this year. Um, and so I think in terms of leading indicators, we need to be looking at what are the skills that are going to be in most demand and industry is starting to, to put up their hand and say we need these people. Um, in addition to that, in terms of the capability in South Australia to provide the skilled people that we need, um, there's two South Australian based drilling training providers that are no longer offering drilling um, training. Um, and it's not on the scope of the public provider at this point in time. Uh, and during the the downturn, we've probably seen a drop off in trade apprenticeships, or we definitely have seen a drop off in trade apprenticeships in those key areas that we've identified. Um, and we may find that it's now been three or four years, the apprentices haven't been taken on, and we're going to see a bigger demand for people in those skilled areas very soon. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that that fits against the national movement of the industry, and nationally, the industry has been shedding people and the growth between now and 22, 2022 is scheduled to be only 5,600 people in the total industry around Australia. So it's a very small increase in an industry that employs over 200,000 people. Uh, in South Australia, where we are growing off a smaller base, how do we find those people that will come into South Australia as drillers and engineers? Because if we're not producing them here, anymore, where will, they, where will they come from? It's an important question. I just uh, wanted to talk to you about uh, industry activity. The, gra the graphic, the slide shows you a number of organisations or different projects that are occurring around in South Australia and the activity that is occurring with them. Most of those uh, you will have uh, heard about recently. Um, the, the two uh, or three that are probably on the top of the list at the moment are Oz Minerals since we had our last uh, um, hiring intentions uh, webinar. Oz Minerals has received approval to proceed with Carapatina and now moving quickly into um, operational stage before final, final approval from the, the government. CU Mining, CU River Mining has also made significant progress on their projects and have recently been in the press advertising and also predicting uh, an increase in the number of employees and if you subscribe to Reese's newsletter you will see information about each of these um, projects and activities and the CU River Mining was talking about 1300 new jobs um, moving forward and also BHP and their expansion into the southern mining area has been very um, rapidly progressing towards uh, a new stage of the Olympic Dam mine and they have been recruiting heavily over the last uh, few months as well. So all of these are project-based increases in South Australia which are seeing a large spike in the South Australian advertising and employment numbers and it's a, it's a uh, really um, interesting to note that it comes off a small number of projects in South Australia and so only through putting in more um, drill holes and activities are we going to actually increase the size of the industry in South Australia so we can spread it further. Um, in 2017-18, the number of operating mines uh, has been recorded by the Department of State Development Minerals Division. There's 11 at the moment, uh, but we note also that Jathan Thambrosia, the Aluka mine, has come out of care and maintenance. So we're telling, uh, recording 13 operating mines. The, the Peppers have uh, 
13 have been approved and a number of mining leases have been granted. Uh, the logos of the companies are indica indicative of, of the activity. Of course, uh, GFG Alliance is the replacement in, in some sense of Arium, GFG Alliance and CIMIC, uh, the mining and steel making uh, elements of what was Arium and uh, they are going through a strategic review and, and though activities are relatively quiet as far as new projects that, that we would expect that there will be activity in the uh, near future as far as that is concerned. Adani uh, is listed there because of the solar project in Wyala, not because of the Carmichael mine in Queensland and there are other projects as, uh, as well that are moving forward including the Iron Road uh, project and Oz Minerals project on uh, at Karapati. Thank you. We'd just like to mention um, the Risa Hot Rubble site. We provide uh, a space where people or a website dedicated to mining careers and to opportunities in South Australia and information about the resources sector in South Australia. Um, the Hot Rubble website is a great place for people wanting information about what's happening um, and we also keep it live and, um, and active. We have a space where people looking for work in the sector can go and register and be notified as vac of vacancies from a range of sources as they become available um, and we also see seek out opportunities to provide better links between individuals and the resources sector and job opportunities. Um, we've recently had a graduate program on there where graduates were able to register their details uh, and were linked up with graduate positions within mining and resource companies so that they could complete their, their studies and graduate. So we've got some really great initiatives on there. We'd really encourage people to have a look and we're really always open to ideas on how to keep it relevant and to develop the space so it can meet the needs of the South Australian resources sector. Thanks Jodie and, and there you'll see uh, the Twitter and Facebook um, details associated with Hot Rubble and uh, there is a constant feed of jobs and opportunities going out on both of those sites so if people you know are looking for jobs and opportunities in the sector in South Australia we'd recommend moving to, uh, going to, to visit Hot Rubble and to uh, checking out those social media activities. So uh, we're now moving on to questions and would like to take the opportunity to answer those. If you have any, it's not too late, please just um, text them in or send them in via the chat box and we'll try to answer them. Well, we so, have one question, Phil, uh, regarding Wyala. Have we seen any movement around the GFG Alliance employing, employing or not employing? Uh, and I can say we have seen vacancies being listed even during the... Uh, the transition stages, Arium was still advertising the odd vacancy here and there. Uh, we have seen vacancies through from GFG Alliance and Liberty House. Um, I haven't seen a CIMIC one yet, um, but as Phil just mentioned, uh, there's really a, an evaluation process going on as they work out what their direction's going to be now that the transition has taken place. Uh, so there is a mine plan already in place for the the mining operations that were under the Arium banner and they are proceeding as they were uh, and we can expect that there will be developments happening in the near future. Uh, I know there was some activities scheduled to take place next uh, in the next few weeks um, but obviously while they do an evaluation of what their position is and make their own decisions about how they will move forward those things have been put on hold but I think we will see some movement there definitely in the next quarter if not in the next month or so. Yeah so um, the other aspect of that is that there are planned activities that have already been there but they are in the process of a strategic review so I know that there were activities around um, the shut and the um, smelter, um, a blast furnace uh, update, I should say, and uh, they were there were people that were being engaged to participate in that shot. Um, that that maintenance and continuation activity is what we have seen so far. New activity is, is yet to um, become obvious. Mm -hmm. Um, so we have a question in regard to activity in the York Peninsula. Um, so in absolute numbers, are we seeing growth in the York Peninsula? And the answer is yes, um, in that the overall number of vacancies has increased 
so dramatically over the time and the York Peninsula has maintained its proportion of vacancies during that time and I think the Aluka mine um, has had an influence on that because when they came out of care and maintenance they started advertising so we're talking about the York, sorry, that's the York Peninsula. Sorry, yeah, yeah. sorry. Um, so yeah. yeah, they have yeah. maintained their their proportion of vacancies, um, but it's not a hugely dramatic one at this point in time. Yeah, yeah I guess the uh, the projects that we are aware of on the York Peninsula are at early stages. Um, the most, I, I guess, the largest uh, employer potential is in the Rex project. Um, and that is progressing. I believe that their plan is to submit their PEPA um, before the end of this year and look for a mining lease within the next year. So uh, I think those are, um, that's, a, that's a bigger opportunity. Some of the smaller ones which are related to whether it be the biofuel projects and other projects are still in early stages. Mm -hmm. um, if the person who submitted this question, if you would like more information, feel free to send us through an email and we can give you a little bit more information about what those vacancies are. Yeah. Um, we've also had a question, there's a PhD student online I believe and they're uh, asking about opportunities at that level. Clearly um, it, de it depends on the, on the uh, stream of, uh, of study, whether it be engineering or geology or, or oil and gas, however um, we are seeing movement in the mining sector and, and the supply chain. Uh, we're seeing Stability, I suppose, is the right way to say it in terms of the oil and gas sector. The employment in the sector has been uh, hit very diff very hard over the last few years and uh, now it is at a, at a state of uh, wait and see in terms of what is happening, but there is some movement in that. Uh, as far as the, uh, uh, the category or, or the level of, of study, um, PhDs are often employed within uh, CRCs and other activities, obviously the universities, and uh, not so much directly on site, but that's uh, the number of PhDs that are, that are employed on site is lower. We haven't got a, an indication of what the, that number is in South Australia, but um, you would imagine, and uh, I, I'm speculating that, as we move more towards higher levels of productivity drives and, and the geophysics and geology support for productivity is increasing, then we would expect to see higher levels of professional skills in those areas to, to, uh, to be employed. So not really a specific answer. Um, I would again say that on the Hot Rubble site we do have some information with regard to that. It would be, uh, we'd be welcome, would welcome a detailed question about that as far as uh, the PhD uh, stream of employment and that would be um, worthwhile. All oh, right, okay. Um, in terms of, we do just have a little bit more information about the, the PhD in mining. So uh, again, I, I just say we could take that offline, I'd be very happy to provide as much information as we can identify to you if you just drop us a line. Um, and of course, as I mentioned, there is an engineering um, page on the, on the Hot Rubble website which talks about opportunities in engineering. And I think too, when you're looking at a specialist area, which a PhD will often be, it'll be in new technologies and advancements, that those opportunities will often be somewhere in the supply chain. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's a good place to look at who are the who are the companies providing these services, who are the ones that are going to benefit from being able to provide newer, better, innovative solutions to the, the resources companies. And that's probably where opportunities may be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, it should also be noted that we were recently advised uh, by the press, and I think it's public uh, domain information, that the the CRC proposal that is being put forward, uh, which is now being called Minex Mineral Exploration CRC, has got through the first gate, and that that is continuing. Uh, towards a final, uh, hope of a final CRC being established 
in financial year 1819. And uh, if that is, is successful, of course, there are many research projects that are associated with that, and it would be a good place to start a conversation with the current Deep Exploration Technology, CRC, about the opportunities. Yeah. Thank you, Phil. Uh, there being no further questions, we'd just like to thank you for attending. I, uh, I hope that we have provided some information that is relevant and useful for you. We would be really um, happy to receive feedback from you about relevant points that you would like to see addressed in the future and how we might improve this as a service. We will run this uh, webinar quarterly and we'll keep it brief and, and to the point in addressing the opportunities and jobs in South Australia in the resources sector. Thank you very much for attending. Thanks, Jody. Thanks, Phil. Bye-bye.